Last month, Meta dropped Llama 2 on the AI scene, and no, it didn't hurt any real llamas in the process. For those scratching their heads wondering if they missed a Zoo Escape newsflash, relax, we're talking code, not four-legged fuzzballs. Although I wouldn't mind making a video on Tina the Llama from Napoleon Dynamite, only true fans will get that reference. Anyways, if your AI fatigue has not reached maximum levels just yet, this video might just get you over the line. But bear with me because today's insights could be a total game changer. Without further ado, let's get into what Llama is, how does it work, is it really capable of dethroning ChatGPT, and so much more. Why wait any longer? Let's get into it. Llama 2 is the second iteration of Meta's open source large language model. It stands for Large Language Model Meta AI. Pretty creative, huh? Many view it as a direct answer to OpenAI's ChatGPT, which needs no introduction. You may be thinking to yourself, Yay, another large language model, it's not like we had enough of these already. And you would be right. These large language models are multiplying faster than the times I've yelled why isn't this working at a seemingly innocent line of code. But this one is different. While ChatGPT is proprietary with undisclosed code, training data, and methods, Llama is open source, boasting publicly available code, training data, and training methods. In fact, Llama is a trailblazer in a way, being the first big name open source large language model. I guess Mark is still trying to make up for his data harvesting lawsuit. Please don't get it confused though, Llama 2 wasn't just a meta masterpiece, it was actually code developed by Microsoft. That's right, the same Microsoft that buddied up with ChatGPT for Bing AI. All I can say is that Microsoft is out here playing the AI field like a true Casanova. Back to what's important though, Llama is like a supercharged autocomplete, guessing what your next word will be, it learns from online text and other public data sets. Llama 2 in particular got a big upgrade, it's trained on roughly 2 trillion words, has 40% more data than its predecessor, and remembers double the context. This means we get a language model that's sharper and stronger, dishing out responses that feel eerily humanly like. For comparison, here's a table showing how Llama 2 outperforms other open source language models on many different benchmarks, including reasoning, coding, proficiency, and knowledge tests. It's also worth noting that despite being free and open source, Llama is relatively small and can be run on your personal computer. That is if you have a good consumer grade PC, but we will get into the specification details soon enough. One of the key differences between Llama and ChatGPT is that Llama isn't available as an end product. This just means that you can't go to Llama.com and interact with the model there like you can with ChatGPT. It has to be downloaded on your system locally, which may seem like a drag for some of you, but it's honestly not that bad. I'll link an article in the description below where you can find the exact play-by-play -play of doing so. Now, although it's not an end product, there are a few ways to access it online through a Hugging Face cloud-hosted instance, where you can even check out the different capabilities of each chat model depending on what option you pick. But what are those options exactly? Well, Llama 2 comes in three distinct sizes, 7B, 13B, and 70B parameters. Think of these parameters as the brain power behind the model. The beefier the number, the smarter it gets. That's because a bigger parameter count means it's been fed a more extensive feast of text, making its responses sharper and more reliable, which is very important when you're dealing with far more complex tasks like coding for example. All three of these options will be linked down below as well, so feel free to play with them after the video and let me know which one you prefer in the comments below. Now, ChatGPT is easy, free, and works well. Why should we even consider messing around with Llama? Well, here are a few reasons why. Reason 1, unlike ChatGPT, Llama 2 can run without an internet connection, which is huge because sometimes a good internet connection is harder to find than a vegan at a barbecue. Reason 2 is the privacy factor. Because you're running your model locally, you don't need to worry about any of the very strange questions that you have asked being stored in a company server. Reason 3 is the capability of fine-tuning the model by teaching it additional data, which genuinely lets you tap into the model's full potential. Now, does this all mean that Llama is superior to ChatGPT? Not necessarily. Both Llama and ChatGPT have their distinct strengths and use cases. Llama stands out for its efficiency and accessibility, making it a go-to choice for tasks that require fast processing, such as chatbots, translation tools, among other things. ChatGPT, on the other hand, is famous for its advanced ability to generate detailed and nuanced text that often mimics human writing seamlessly. 
This makes it an excellent choice for applications needing high quality language generation like creative writing, automated news creation, or even script writing. Personally, I believe that they're both excellent tools that can be used in different scenarios. Now let's talk Llama's technical specs. First up on our list, the languages it supports, and that is primarily English, as it makes up a whopping 90% of its training data. It does dabble in other languages like German, French, Chinese, Spanish, and a few others, but I'd advise not putting all your chips on them if you know what I mean. Now, do you remember that earlier I mentioned the different parameter sizes available in Llama 2? 7B, 13B, and 70B? Well, no surprise here, but each of those options has different computer hardware requirements. So here's a quick rundown of what's recommended. For Model 7B, the consensus is at least 10 gigabytes of VRAM for optimal performance. For Model 13B, you're looking at a minimum of 20 gigabytes of VRAM. And lastly, Model 70B would be about 80 gigabytes of VRAM at a minimum. One other thing to remember is that there are many factors outside of VRAM that you should keep in mind, like CPU, main memory, and storage, just name a few. But that is it for today. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about this new player in the AI field. If you found this video helpful, we'd love if you'd hit that like button to show your support. Even better if you leave a comment. Think I missed something? Are you a fan of Llama too? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time my friends, and never stop learning.